my dear students i am dr shantara jappa professor of mathematics nitty minx unit of technology bangalore i have already taken some classes for solid geometry in the previous uh, days today my topic is uh, vector algebra i have mentioned calculus but the portion calculus is covered by my colleague so let us see vector uh, algebra uh, i will give the basics first we have already might have studied uh, vectors in your uh, previous classes because i found some syllabus in high school itself containing vectors uh, but still as a recapitulation we can see this you can see the definition see this is scalar definition the vectors and scalars the physical quantities having only magnitude only magnitude are called as scalars only magnitude see examples you can see length breadth thickness volume time temperature mass density all like this there are uh, many such quantities you all are familiar so they are all uh, a uh, scalar uh, quantities there are many other examples so next is uh, vectors see physical quantities having both magnitude directions are called vectors so you are familiar with these uh, quantities already see displacement velocity acceleration force weight magnetic field electric field like that any force phenomena okay they are all vector quantities having both magnitude and uh, directions then we shall see representation of vectors how we represent the vectors uh, geometrically because many things we analyze through geometry see vector quantities are represented by the directed line segments in the form you say this it's a directed line segment from a to b so here the this can be this this vector ab means it's a directed line segment i will consider from a to b the direction of the vector is from a to b and the magnitude of this vector is going to be length of this uh, uh, vector ab you see this length is ab like that we can uh, represent the vectors so next is uh, you can uh, see types of vectors here see first one is null or zero vector that means vectors having magnitude zero that's all quantities having both magnitude directions are vector quantities sub the magnitude is zero then the vector is called a zero vector or null vector and uh, next is unit vector clear the quantities having vector quantities having the magnitude unity uh, the magnitude is going to be one unit are called uh, uh, unit vectors uh, next type is collinear vectors see a system of vectors having the same direction are called uh, collinear vectors then vectors having the same direction a system of two or three vectors suppose they have the same direction then they are called uh, collinear vectors see here one important property is there uh, that is uh, if two vectors are collinear then one of these can be expressed as a linear as a scalar multiple of the other a very important property i will explain this in the problems next one fourth one coplanar vectors see a system of vectors lie in only one plane a vectors lying in one particular plane are called uh, coplanar vectors i will come to this later once again then equality of vectors two or more vectors are said to be equal if they have the same magnitude and direction both magnitude and direction should be same then the vectors are equal and uh, negative of a vector see this the negative of a vector a is a vector whose magnitude is equal to that of a only but the direction is opposite to that of a see this figure see this is the first one you see it say from a to b like this and this is from b to a see uh, just direction is opposite but the magnitude is same this is also say ab and this is also say ab or any other point say pq like that that's what and uh, one more uh, i have not given here constant vectors very important when you are going to say the vectors are constant vectors a, a, vectors having both magnitude and direction fixed fixed magnitude and direction 
vectors having fixed magnitude and directions are called constant vectors. You will come across this type of vectors uh, in the problems. Next, uh, let us come to the very important algebra vectors. Here, let us take one by one. First one is scalar multiplication. How to multiply a vector A by a scalar say m? If you multiply a vector A by a scalar m, then we get m a. See this m a is also a vector whose magnitude is m times that of a. So, magnitude is m times that of a and the direction is in the direction of a only provided m is positive. Only magnitude is increasing or decreasing in the direction of a depending on m positive. But suppose m is negative, then definitely uh, the direction is opposite to that of a, then the vector direction is opposite to that of a. You must be very careful, I will explain these things in the problems. Next second one is this, say m is a scalar and a and b are two vectors, then you say m times a plus b. See you can just multiply it, say m a plus m b like this. And uh, the other one is suppose uh, m and n are scalars and then see this m plus n times a. You see it is going to be m a plus n a like this. Or a, a removing this a common and keeping m plus n outside. And this is uh, see m times n a. So, nothing wrong by multiplying m and n together m n into a like this. These are all the things you must know while doing problems uh, uh, useful. Next let us come to addition and subtraction of factors. See, this is a very important concept, I am explaining graphically. Let A be a vector, say it is a vector from P to Q, magnitude means it is the length P Q and B is here another vector, see R to S. The magnitude of this vector is, R, I mean uh, length R S and the direction is from R to S. How to add these two vectors? See here, you see this vector A is here, P to Q, to get the resultant, the addition of these two vectors results in one more vector. What is that means? You see this B, the initial point is R, keep the initial point of R on the terminal point of uh, the first vector that is Q here. See, then uh, you see this vector Q S is here, I mean R S is here, you see this R S that is drawn parallel to this here and now you see the resultant. The resultant is the vector P to S. You have to join the initial point of the first vector to the terminal point of the second vector. So, then I will be getting A plus B. That is the resultant of A and B. Like this uh, not only for A and B, you can take uh, a system of vectors away adding. I will show it on the board. Suppose uh, this is the vector A, you have to add it to the vector B say that is going like this say, this is another vector say B like this, this is uh, P to Q and say this is R to S like this. Say there may be one more vector, it may be coming like this, uh, that is another vector say, uh, say E to F like this like this. Then you see what is the resultant of uh, these three vectors means, you see the first vector is here, you are keeping the initial point of the second vector B on the terminal point of the vector A and then see the third vector that is this vector C say, whose initial point is placed on the terminal point of the vector B here like this. Then what is the resultant means? You see the resultant is here that is the uh, that is from the point P to F that is the initial point of the first vector to the terminal point of the third vector C that means it will go like this. This is the vector going to be A plus B plus C like this. The direction of this uh, A plus B plus C is here and the magnitude is this length uh, Pf like this. Similarly, if you have uh, any more vectors you can based on this you can add uh, any number of vectors that is what uh, vector addition. 
see here a minus b how to subtract b from a it is nothing but adding minus b to a adding minus b to a so a is here c p to q and see minus b means see the previous one it is going from r to s downwards like this then you have joined a p to s like this so minus b means just opposite to that of b that will go from in this direction in the previous figure you see it is going downwards like this now it is going in the opposite direction it is here this is minus b so the re resultant of a and minus b is going to be definitely here see it is p to s uh, like that uh, this uh, uh, addition I mean subtraction concept is also nothing but addition just like this you are adding minus b to a then you see very important properties here commutative law vector addition is commutative that is a uh, a plus b is nothing but b plus a whether you add a to b or b to a both are same proof is there geometrically I can prove it uh, but uh, if you want I will just tell you those things are important Suppose this is the vector a and say this is the vector b, then you see it is also called uh, parallelogram law forces in statistics. This is the vector b because it is parallel to this, then this is the vector uh, a only like this based on the equality of vector. See these two are same because the direction is same, magnitude is same, these two are same, this one. Then by vector addition, what the resultant of A and B means here? This is P, Q, R. You just see this. This is S say. P to Q, then Q to R. What the resultant of A and B means? It is the vector from uh, P to R. This is going to be A plus B. And similarly, when you see downwards, see P to S, that is the vector B and S to R that is the vector A. So, the resultant of B and A is definitely P to R only, but it is B plus A you just see this like this. So, this vector P R is nothing but A plus B and also B plus A. So, that law is true that is what committee to law. Uh, similarly, you can uh, prove this uh, associative property also. Uh, how I have proved like that considering A, B, C, first you add A to B then to C or uh, uh, you see this add A to B and then to C we can prove this how I have proved A plus B could similarly we can prove this I do not have time this proof is not necessary you can if you are interested you go through the textbooks. Then uh, see vectors in a plane I told you about coplanar vectors, vectors lie in a in a single plane only one plane a system of vectors lie in one plane are called coplanar vectors. So, here one important property is there uh, suppose the vectors a b c are coplanar then one of these vectors can be expressed as a linear combination of the other two vectors you just see here when a b c are coplanar they are in one plane then you see this vector a can be expressed as linear combination of the other two this is what linear combination see multiply if this b by m, m times this b and n times this c where m and n are scalars I told you then uh, this a can be written like this a very important property or b can be written in terms of um, so here it is a a and c it is a b not b, b cannot be expressed like this c it is a. So, alpha a plus beta c like this see this b can be written as alpha a plus beta c not b. Okay. Uh, uh, like that you can express c in terms of uh, a and b. Suppose c here then b is here you can write instead of c a like that we can express uh, one vector as a linear combination of the other vector that is very important property. Observe here a is a vector say from this point to this point and say m times that. So, it is increasing to this point that is m a and similarly you see here say this is up to this uh, arrow say it is a vector b then multiply this one by a scalar n. So, n is positive then the direction will be same see so, I will be getting n b. So, this point to this point it is m a and uh, this point to this point it is n b. See now see the vector addition. So, the, this vector 
and uh, this vector is same because they are having the same direction and same magnitude. So, it is NB only and similarly this is MA, this is also MA I told you just now. So, now see the vector addition from you see this MA plus NB you see this, this point to this point and then to this. So, the resultant is here that is the vector C. So, this C is going to be MA plus NB or when you see downwards see this is NB and this is MA once again this C is going to be NB plus MA. So, like this this is very important concept see I have expressed C in terms of A and B like this when all the three are coplanar very important uh, concept. And next let us come to vectors in x y plane very useful concept. See let us consider x x y plane here x axis y axis and let us consider uh, uh, some point here say x y the r is the point x y you know that uh, this uh, distance O to p is x and p to r it is y they are called Cartesian coordinates of the point r see here O p is x O q is y you see this is uh, O q is y O q or p r both are same this distance and uh, this is O p or this q r are same that is x and uh, now see this i I have written here i that is a unit vector along x axis it is the standard symbol we use i for unit vector along x axis and similarly j unit vector along y axis. So, unit vector definition I have already given vector with magnitude 1 unit and the direction is along x axis. So, j also magnitude 1 unit, but the direction is along y axis and see i and j are perpendicular to each other here because x axis is perpendicular to y axis. In this case i and j are constant vectors because magnitude of i is 1 and the direction is along x axis it is fixed. Similarly, j magnitude is 1 unit and the direction is along y axis always. So, direction is fixed therefore, i and j are constant vectors magnitude and directions are fixed. Uh, now, see this I am interested with uh, getting this vector o r vector o r just see this this i is a unit vector here if I multiply this one by x I will be getting this vector o p see this o p is x if I multiply this o p by i x i that is going to be the vector o p do not get confusion here o p is the length of this vector o p. So, o p vector o p is x i similarly here see this uh, o q the distance is y and the vector is j if you multiply this y by j I will be getting this vector o q vector o q vector p r are same. So, it is going to be you see this I have written p r y j that is nothing but o q also. Then by the addition of vectors you see this I am interested with this vector o r this o r. So, that is the resultant of this o p and p r see o to p is x i p to r it is y j. So, the resultant is from the first point initial point is here terminal point is here. So, it is going to the o r. So, o r is going to be vector o r is going to be see this o p plus p r. In this case vector o p is x i vector p r is y j therefore, I am getting the vector o r as x i plus y j see this. Uh, usually this vector is denoted by capital R that is x i plus y j standard symbol and it is called the position vector of the point uh, p x y with, ref with respect to the fixed point o that is the origin that is very important many times you will be using these ideas in vector calculus this side is very important in vector calculus. And see what is the magnitude of this vector r magnitude of the vector r is nothing but the distance o r this distance o r you can see that that is by distance formula our analytical geometry you can calculate that is square root of x minus 0 whole square plus y minus 0 whole square that is root of x square plus y square just see here it is only the distance formula you can calculate that is the magnitude of the vector r or you can denote it by small r capital R for the vector and small r for its magnitude and what is the direction of this vector it is very clear the direction is uh, with respect to x axis y axis. See if I take the angle 
say theta which makes uh, this war with x axis then automatically with y axis known it is a 90 minus theta because the full angle is 90. So, if it is theta then this angle is 90 minus theta. So, theta is enough here what is the angle made by this vector with x axis y axis that is the direction. So, for that it is very clear. So, here the opposite side is P r adjacent side is uh, uh, O p O p is x only magnitude O p is x P r is y then you see tan theta it is a right angle triangle here right angle that p if I take tan theta here see opposite side p r by o p uh, p r is y and this o p is x. So, tan theta equal to y by x therefore, theta equal to tan inverse y by x you see this I have written here directly. So, first you see tan theta y by x then theta is tan inverse y by x when theta is known. So, angle made by this o p with x axis is known therefore, immediately with y axis it is 90 minus theta ok these things very important. Next let us come to vectors in space you have I, I myself have taught you already three, three dimensional geometry you see here we have three axis x axis y axis z axis ok and this point p is in space x y z ok I do not want to repeat it once again I explained all these things in solid geometry and this is the origin O 0 0 0 coordinates are 0 0 0. Now, my problem is how to find this vector O p this vector O p ok you just see this is a vector in space vector in space you see when we have the three coordinate axis like this x axis y axis z axis this is the origin then the point is somewhere here x y z then the vector is like this like this it is coming this point is in space and this vector is passing through the origin you see this that is directed towards this point that tidal should have that is what the vector O p is here. And here I will take x x along x axis the unit vector i and along y axis you see x axis is here the unit vector is i and y axis is here the unit vector is j and z axis is here unit vector is k. You know that all the three coordinate axis are perpendicular to each other they are called the rectangular coordinate axis and here we have three planes. See one is x y plane you see this and another is y z plane and the one more is x z plane. Not only coordinate axis are perpendicular to each other all the three coordinate planes also perpendicular to each other they are called the rectangular coordinate planes and the x y z are nothing but the perpendicular distances drawn from this point to the respective coordinate planes. So, one perpendicular like this that is going to be z and another you have to draw like this that is going to be y and one more x axis means I cannot show here it is like this it is the point is not on the board it is in space you have to draw like this that is what uh, x in this case. So, all these things I explain now let us see this here see the construction this O to L see this O to L let us say that is nothing but uh, x here because along x axis and see this O to M that is nothing but y and see O to N that is nothing but z that is very clear. And then it is very clear O L vector O L is going to be x i vector O L is going to be x i because O L is x and see this O M that is y O M is a O M is y and the vector is a unit vector is j here. So, I will be getting this vector O m as y j see this, but this O m can be taken as L f because this they are having the same direction and see this L f and O m are same the vectors from L to f and O to m that is y j I have written here. Then uh, see this vector O n see O n is z this is k unit vector. So, z k becomes the vector o n vector o n and vector f p are same this f p it looks length in the figure it looks like this this o n and f p are same because this vector is in space and see this perpendicular drawn to this plane. So, whether it is o n or this f p both are same. So, here I have written vector o n is nothing but vector o p that is nothing but z k then you concentrate towards this vector O f this O f is the resultant of these two vectors that is this O l vector O l 
and vector L f. So, this O f is going to be resultant of O l plus L f see the direction. So, O l plus L f. So, O l is known x i, L f is known y j. Therefore, this O f is going to be x i plus y j. You see this I have written O f equal to O l plus L f that is equal to x i plus y j. Then come to once again I am interested in this O p and see now you know this vector O f and then F p. So, the resultant of these two O f and F p is going to be O p for this purpose only explain vector addition first. So, this O f is going to be vector O f plus vector F p and see it is very clear it is going to be O f is a uh, you have proved already x i plus y j and uh, F p is uh, z k it is here. So, you see that you got the vector O p as x i plus y j plus z k. Uh, usually, we denote this vector O p by r that is once again uh, position vector of the point p with respect to the fixed point O a uh, very important concept here. Uh, because uh, this r is going to be a function of x y z here. Suppose, if you treat this x y z as functions of small t small t where t may be some scalar particularly time very useful then this vector r becomes a function of t then vector r becomes a function of t then as t changes x y z changes that means this point p will be moving in space this point is a uh, point p is here x y z when x y z are functions of t as t changes the will be getting different points I mean the point p is start moving in space like this. So, it will trace a curve in space. So, it is called a, a space curve x is a function of t y is a function of t z is a function of t means uh, represents a curve in space in three dimension that to in parametric form where t is called the parameter you can take it as time or other any other scalars like u a very important concept in vector calculus and uh, in many other uh, when you are studying many other physical phenomena. And see this magnitude of r it is nothing but the distance op you see that distance op distance formula I told you under solid geometry already. So, the distance op is nothing but square root of x minus 0 whole square plus y minus 0 whole square plus z minus 0 whole square that means the distance op is going to be root of x square plus y square plus z square uh, these things already over in solid geometry that is going to be the magnitude of this vector op I mean the magnitude of the vector r as per the direction is concerned this is a vector in space see vector in space it is the vector in space it is like this x axis y axis z axis origin is here vector in space is like this. So, now to know the direction of this see what is the angle made by this vector with x axis with y axis with z axis that is what you have to think like this ok or you remember any corners in your building and see that corner you can take it as the origin and uh, the three coordinate axis are there three coordinate planes are there then you can think of a vector like this and this is the point x y z. So, here this also I told you already in solid geometry direction cosines will come into picture what is the angle made by this line or vector O p with x axis I will take it as alpha here and what is the angle made by this uh, uh, I mean x axis is here. So, you can take this x axis angle made by this O p with x axis this angle. this angle. So, that is a this angle ok that is x alpha this angle and with y axis it is angle here beta and with z axis gamma that is what I explained already in solid geometry. Then the cosine of these angles cos alpha cos beta cos gamma are called direction cosines of that line or this vector in this case uh, whether it is a vector or a line it is same usually denoted by L m n you know that property L square plus m square plus n square equal to 1 and uh, even I have proved that in solid geometry this uh, relationship proved L equal to x by r m equal to y by r n equal to z by r here x is known r is known root of x square plus y square plus z square. So, L is known what is L cos alpha. So, cos alpha is x by r therefore, alpha is known cos inverse of this similarly m is cos beta y by r y is known r is known. So, you can get cos beta. So, beta equal to cos inverse of this. Similarly, z is known, r is known. So, cos gamma is n. So, we will be getting gamma. 
So, the angle made by the vector O p with all the three coordinate axis is known. So, direction question is important. Then uh, let us come to the vector products. This uh, from this uh, uh, heading onwards, uh, your uh, real syllabus will start. You can get questions now onwards in the examination. Uh, of course, addition based on addition subtraction also will get, but this very important concept. See, vector products are defined in two ways. How to multiply the given two vectors? There are two ways of multiplying. A uh, one product result in a scalar called scalar product or dot product and the other results in a vector called the vector product or cross product. So, here see the definition of scalar product. Uh, if A and B are any two vectors, then the dot product or scalar product of A and B is defined as a scalar quantity, is defined as a scalar quantity. That scalar quantity is here magnitude of A into magnitude of B into cosine of the angle between A and B. See here, say A B angle is theta, then see the definition, where theta is the angle between the vectors A and B. Okay. So, this is a scalar quantity, magnitude of A scalar, magnitude of B scalar and uh, cos theta is also another scalar. So, it is going to be scalar quantity. So, this product of A and B, even though A and B are vectors, their product is going to be a scalar. So, it is called a scalar product. Let us see, usually denoted by A dot B, A dot B, it is called the dot product of A and B. See, some properties of uh, dot product. Number 1, dot product is commutative just like a plus b equal to b plus a here a dot b equal to b dot a. Because see here when you are uh, taking the dot product from a to b say this is a and this is b a to b. So, it is a uh, anti clockwise direction the angle theta will be positive. So, cos theta when you are taking from b to a b to a magnitude of b magnitude of a will not change, but cos of theta become cos of minus theta, but cos of minus theta is cos theta only see this. Uh, therefore, whether you take A to B, B to A, uh, the product remains same. Therefore, dot product is distributive. Uh, next, see the other one. If A is perpendicular to B, then uh, if A is perpendicular to B, it is very clear theta becomes pi by 2, then this cos theta becomes cos 90 and cos 90 equal to 0. Therefore, A dot B becomes 0. That is what very important property. And suppose uh, A dot B equal to 0, converse implies A is perpendicular to B provided A and B are non-zero vectors. Because in the product, we have modulus of A modulus of B into cos theta as A dot B. Suppose modulus of A is 0 means A dot B becomes 0 or modulus of B 0 means A dot B 0. So, if these two are non-zero, suppose A dot B 0 means mod A mod B cos theta equal to 0. Suppose modulus of A not 0, modulus of B not 0 means non zero vector, then cos theta equal to 0, therefore theta equal to pi by 2. That is what the explanation you have to give uh, for that uh, A dot B equal to 0 implies A perpendicular to B, correct, provided A and B are non zero vectors. Next, see this uh, dot product is uh, distributive, that is A dot of B plus C is A dot B plus A dot C. Many times it is very, very useful while attending the problems. Next, one more application is here to find the projection of A and B, a very important quantity while studying some um, problems. See here, A is a vector here, that is the vector O p and the vector O q say B and the angle between A and B say theta, draw P L perpendicular to O q. Then, see projection of A on O q is going to be this distance O L, projection of A on B is the distance O L. So, how to get this O L based on dot product? For that you see cosine of this angle you take because uh, here 90 degree cos theta is O L by O P. See this O L by O P. Uh, I am interested with O L because O L is the required projection O L equal to O P cos theta. This O P is nothing but the magnitude of the vector uh, A. So, I have written magnitude of A cos theta. So, that O L is mod A cos theta. So, now you come to the definition of A dot B, A dot B is mod A mod B cos theta. See this modulus of A into cos theta is O L, modulus of A into cos theta is O L uh, into B I will keep as it is. See this O L is going to be A dot B by modulus of B. So, this O L that is the projection of A and B, you can get it very important uh, 
a formula to find the projection of A and B. Similarly, if you want the projection of B on A, only numerator remains same, only denominator will get modulus of A. Next, uh, let us come to the very important property of this vector triads i j k. See i j k I told you already they are along x axis, y axis, z axis mutually perpendicular to each other i perpendicular to j, j perpendicular to k. Suppose it is x axis i is here, y axis j is here, z axis k is here like this x, y, z or you can change x, y, z it is left to you. They are i j k are mutually perpendicular to each other. So, observe this i dot j i dot j definitely 0 because i and j are perpendicular to each other I told you just now if a and b are perpendicular uh, then a dot b is 0. Similarly, j and k perpendicular therefore, uh, j dot k 0 k and i also perpendicular is equal to 0 and whether it is i dot j or j dot i do not worry because commutative i dot j j dot i j dot k k dot j k dot i i because they have the commutative property a dot b equal to b dot a and see this i dot i j dot j k dot k how it is going to be 1 I will just explain this as per the definition of a dot b a dot b it is a magnitude of a into magnitude of b into cos theta okay, where theta is the angle between a and b here a equal to b equal to i only both are i. So, I will be getting i dot i magnitude of i magnitude of i into angle between i and i is definitely 0 i to i. So, magnitude of i is 1 unit because i is a unit vector and uh, once again 1 cos 0 all of you know 1 and see the product is going to be 1 like this same thing j dot j also same thing k dot k is also same thing. So, i dot a j dot j k dot k 1 very important. Next you see this uh, how to find a dot b that is all when a and b are given like this see a equal to say a 1 i plus a 2 j plus a 3 k b equal to b 1 i plus b 2 j plus b 3 k. Here this uh, uh, a 1 is the component of a in the direction of uh, x axis and uh, a 2 is the component of a in the direction of y axis and a 3 is the component of uh, a in the direction of z axis. How you get means see if you want the component of a in the direction of x axis then you have to see what is the unit vector along x axis that is i. Then you take a dot i if you take a dot i then you see this i dot i becomes 1. I will be getting only a 1 i dot j 0 i dot k 0. So, a dot i if I take it is going to be a 1 that is the component of a in the direction of x axis. Similarly, if you want the component of a in the direction of y axis see in y axis in along y axis j is the unit vector. So, you have to take the dot product of a with uh, j. So, when you take a dot j see j dot i becomes 0. So, this part becomes 0, but j dot j is 1 a 2 is a constant remains same and j dot k becomes 0. So, we will be getting a 2. Similarly, when you take a dot k first 2 becomes 0 and k dot k is 1. So, we will be getting a like that you can get the component of a vector in the direction of uh, some other vector by reducing in which direction you want the component in that direction take the unit vector and take the dot product with the given pro, uh, vector that is the way of finding the component. Okay, let us see here how to find a dot b just simply I will tell you because this b 1, b 2, b 3 are components of uh, b in uh, x axis, y axis, z axis direction. See very simple I can prove this actually a dot b equal to how a 1, b 1 plus a 2, b 2 plus a 3, b 3. A uh, proof is not necessary for the examination, but today's class is only I am concentrating towards all the basics. If you are thorough in basics then definitely you can uh, do problems correctly. So, how to how we, a dot b is going to be so much for the examination that is enough, but uh, see how we will get a dot b equal to so much. See when the vector a dot b see a is a 1 i plus a 2 j plus a 3 k dot b is b 1 i plus b 2 j plus b 3 k see this 
then it is just like your ordinary multiplication see a1 i dot b1 i see that a1 i dot b1 i next plus a1 i dot b2 j plus a1 i dot p3 k see similarly the other three products will come a2 j dot b1 i plus a to j dot b to j and see this plus a to j dot b 3 k last one a 3 k dot b 1 i plus a 3 k dot b 2 j plus a 3 k dot b 3 k. So much is that too, but for you it is enough a dot b how you get means that answer is enough observe here a 1 b 1 their scalar quantities i and i they are vectors. So, if you just take this b 1 outside and keep this product outside that is what scalar multiplication I told a 1 b 1 you can keep outside a 1 b 1 like this and see in between uh, these two vectors you cannot remove i dot i i dot i is going to be 1 i dot i is 1 multiply a 1 b 1 and but here a 1 b 2 multiply but i dot j i dot j 0 observe here a 1 b 3 multiply correct but i dot k 0 I, I told you that property. So, this is going to be 0 this is going to be 0 ok this is going to be only a 1 b 1 because i dot i is 1 similarly here j dot i 0 do not worry about a 2 b 1 there is scalars you can take it outside this product. Uh, j dot i is 0, so it becomes 0, but here a 2 b 2, but j dot j is 1. So, I will be getting a 2 b 2 there and j dot j is going to be 1 Okay, and this is going to be a 2 b 2, but here j dot k 0, a 2 b 3 into j dot k, j dot k 0 because j and uh, k are perpendicular. Come to the last one, k dot i 0, because uh, k is perpendicular to i and a, a 3 b 1 you can take outside. Similarly, here k dot j 0 because k perpendicular to j a 3 b 2 you can remove outside, but the last one see a 3 b 3, but k dot k that is 1 that is what the answer see a 1 b 1 plus a 2 b 2 plus a 3 b 3 uh, that is what I have given the answer directly there, but for the examination this is enough how to take the dot product means multiply the coefficients of i see a 1 b 1 and uh, a plus a 2 b 2 plus a 3 b that is enough ok let us come to uh, crash product for uh, how to define crash product is also called the vector product because the product result in a vector see for any two vectors a and b crash product is defined to be a vector magnitude of a into magnitude of b into sin theta sin of the angle between a and b into unit vector n see this unit vector n where n is the unit vector perpendicular to both a and b it is here that is perpendicular to the plane of a and b that means suppose if you take x axis y axis like this x axis y axis I mean uh, a and b like this they are in one plane a and b are in one plane you just see here then n is a unit vector like this that is they are in a plane a and b are in one plane like this a plane you imagine then uh, this n is a unit vector perpendicular to both a and b that means perpendicular to a and b is perpendicular to the plane itself that is n here. So, in this case it is a vector a cross b cross product of a and b is a vector where theta is the angle between a and b see here sin of that angle into n. So, here mag magnitude of a magnitude of b into sin theta is the you see this product it is going to be the magnitude of a cross b this uh, a, the symbol for this crash product is a crash b, but the crash product of a and b means a crash b do not read it as a into b a crash b whose magnitude is mod a mod b sin theta where theta is the angle between a and b. What the direction means see a crash b is perpendicular to a and b here like this. So, a b and uh, another vector is coming like this that is a crash b and in that direction we have n here. So, usually denoted by a crash b are given here. So, a cross b equal to uh, magnitude is this mod a mod b sin theta into n or that is denoted by this you can just write n. 
So, here very important is in the examination this question is very familiar they will give a and b you have to find the unit vector perpendicular to a and b perpendicular to both a and b or perpendicular to the plane of a and b it is very very familiar you can always expect one problem see this this unit vector n is perpendicular to both a and b it is given by a cross b by modulus of a cross b. I mean here any vector how to find a unit vector for a given vector. Suppose uh, a is some vector say it is from uh, uh, p to q like this then what is a uh, unit vector say here usually denoted by a cap unit vector in the direction of a. So, here it is very clear this a cap is equal to how you get this a cap means reduce the magnitude of this vector to one unit say so, one unit means one centimeter or one unit means it is left to you it is a scalar one unit means one kg one quintal or one centimeter one feet like that. So, it depends reduce this uh, length to one unit ok direction remains same how to reduce this uh, magnitude of a to one unit means you have to divide by this p q that means magnitude of a this vector a is divided by magnitude of the vector a if you do that this a is reduced to a vector of magnitude one unit you have to remember this how to get a unit vector in the direction of a given vector. So, here a cross b is a vector a cross b itself a vector perpendicular to both a and b uh, how to get a unit vector in this direction divided by its magnitude ok it is very important. And next other properties you see here properties cross product is not commutative that is a cross b is not b cross a in the previous a dot b is b dot a a plus b is b plus a fine, but here a cross b is not b cross a because see a cross b is going to be minus of b cross a see because of the definition see I told you in the dot product see when you are uh, see this a to b anti clockwise direction theta positive when you are coming from b to a theta is negative in this case because of sin theta sin of minus theta sin of minus theta becomes minus sin theta therefore, it is going to be minus here. So, mod b mod b sin theta into n correct that is a, a cross b only, but because I am getting minus when I take b cross a that is what the reason see because sin of minus theta minus sin theta when you take b to a. Next if a and b are parallel then a cross b becomes 0 because theta becomes 0 or you can say parallel means uh, theta may be taken as 0 or 180 because sin 0 or sin of 180 becomes 0 that is what. So, if the vectors are parallel then a cross b equal to 0 uh, and vice versa uh, that is why true provided a and b are non 0 vectors because a cross b equal to 0 immediately do not say a parallel to b because in the definition uh, mod a may be 0 or mod b may be 0 then uh, a cross b definitely becomes 0. Then this you see this property uh, very important for the vector triads i j k see what is i cross i j cross j k cross k means uh, just like you see here in general a cross a becomes 0 a cross a becomes 0 because the angle between a and a is 0 angle between b and b is 0 a cross a b cross b c cross c it definitely becomes 0 similar to this i cross i what is the angle between i and i 0 j and j angle is 0 in the definition sin theta is there therefore, sin 0 is 0 ok this is a very important you see in general a cross a b cross b and all but see i cross j i cross j is going to be k j cross k is going to because the vector product cross product when you take it result in a vector ok you see this it results in a vector how and you see j cross i means minus of this because i cross j is minus of j cross i. So, I will be getting minus k and all it is ok, but just uh, one minute I will explain this in the figure you can easily remember this see here i j k say unit vectors here. See this is a uh, anti clockwise direction positive direction and this is negative direction all of you know that angle angle is concerned. See i cross j i cross j as per the definition modulus of i into modulus of j into cosine of 
the angle between i and j angle between i and j I mean sin, sin of cos product, sin of the angle between i and j that is 90 degree here. Uh, cross product is sin theta, sin of the angle between i and j 90 and the unit vector n that is perpendicular to i and j. In this case vector perpendicular to i and j is k, it is like this, it is k. So, it is in the direction of uh, that is uh, what you are defining in the cross product a cross b n see that n is nothing but k here, there n is the unit vector here, k is the unit vector. So, I will be getting k here, this is nothing but that n cap perpendicular to both a and b. See one unit, here one unit sin 90 1 and see I am getting k. So, this product I do not want to write this symbol because it looks like cross product. So, better put bracket. So, you see this i cross j is k like this. if I interchange j cross i it is sin 90 j cross i if you take it is 90 degree here when you go like this 90 when you come like this minus pi by 2. So, in the definition I should write sin of minus 90 sin of minus 90 become minus sin 90. So, I will be getting one minus sin here extra sin 90 minus so minus k here that is what did otherwise a cross b is minus b cross a you can use it. Similarly, you can see the other two see j cross k. Uh, magnitude of j magnitude of k 1 unit sin 90 this angle is 90. So, 1 and the unit vector perpendicular to j and k is i. If you take j cross i see this j cross k j here k here and here i. So, at the end I will be getting i. So, that is what j cross k is going to be i. Similarly, if I take k cross i it is j. So, that is what I have given. If you reverse the direction see i cross k it is negative direction. So, I will be getting minus j. You, you can see this i cross k you can re remember i cross k minus j anti clockwise k cross j k cross j minus i j cross i minus k like this see that when you are moving in clockwise di anti clockwise direction positive i cross j is k j cross k is i k cross i is j fine, but when it is in the a clockwise direction i cross k minus j k cross j minus i j cross i minus k like that a very important property you should remember forever. And the one more application see modulus of a cross b gives the area of the parallelogram. it is one of the application gives the area of the parallelogram whose adjacent sides are the vectors a and b. I do not want to give the proof uh, I can uh, uh, give this proof in the uh, next class because you please go through all the things what I explained today they are all the very very basic things unless you know you cannot understand vector algebra or vector calculus. So, definitely in the another uh, coming class tomorrow I am taking I think uh, two classes or three classes enough they have, they have allotted four classes uh, I can cover lot of portions I will be doing more problems do not miss this session thank you.